it's Brooke from the Vintage Gardener. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna do a fall wreath. So I know I mentioned in the previous video that uh, my house is getting a little bit of, a t of tension because of the gardening. Um, I mean, first off, I'm on the main road. So that's, you know, people are always paying attention to house on the main road. But this was a house that people knew because prior owners still flower here. And on top of that, it was empty for three years and people were watching it, trying to figure out if somebody was gonna buy it. So, but the garden is definitely getting a lot more notice. So I kind of feel a certain amount of pressure to make sure that the front of my house is on fleek. So I've never really been into decorating porches. Like I would put up a fall wreath, but I've never had like a real porch to de decorate. So now I have one and I feel like I need to do the thing properly. So let me show you what I've got. Okay, so this is the wreath. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna go up high for this one so y'all can see. <laughs> better. So this is the wreath that I've done. It is bur a burlap wreath and if you guys really want to, if you guys want to know, I didn't show you guys how to do it in this video. I did another video for 4th of July. It's the same principle and I'll link it. So I'm going to do two swags on each side of the door. So I wanted the wreath to coordinate but not necessarily be matchy matchy. So these are the colors that I chose for the wreath. So I've got you know, a hydrangea. I think it's supposed to be scabiosa in white sunflower. And then for the swags, I'm gonna be doing deeper colors, these colors deeper. So I think it'll look all nice together, that being matchy matchy. So I'm just gonna put this on the stand and then I'm just gonna get making. I mean, basically I'm just gonna stick the flowers inside the wreath I'm gonna try to wrap them around, but I'm gonna put it on time elapse because I think a lot of this is self-explanatory. Bumper Snoot and my dog is right there running around the, on the table. I see you. I see you, baby. <laughs> hmm, what's the matter? What's the matter? Do you want a treat? Is that what you want a treat? Yeah, okay. All right, I'll get you a treat. You, that's his little biking pose. <laughs> Okay, so here it is. So this is definitely improvement on the first fall wreath that, that I did. I think I just did blank, burlap. I think I just put a single sunflower. Uh, so I'm definitely putting more flowers on it. Uh, the I think the oranges in here really uh, contrast nicely with the door. They certainly, I don't know if it shows up well on the camera, but in person it definitely pops against the pink. 
I'm going to be doing planters. I'm going to be doing swags to go on the light. And so the overall theme is oranges and coppery, but I didn't, I want it to fall, but I didn't want it to be too like folly kind of fall where, we, well, with pumpkins and that sort of, don't get me wrong. I am going to get some pumpkins up here when we get closer to Thanksgiving, my Halloween and more into Thanksgiving. But I wasn't, I didn't want to go with the whole like orange and red leaf theme. I wanted something a little bit more subtle, which I hope I, I feel I've achieved it. Hopefully you guys agree too. So that is it for this video, guys. So don't forget to comment, like, and more importantly, subscribe. <laughs> Please subscribe. I, Cause I feel sometimes like I'm talking to myself. And of course, don't forget to share with your friends cause I'm sure other people could use some fall inspiration. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay guys, so in today's video, we are going to be working on the door swag. Or I guess I should say the either side of the door swag. So this, I'll pull it back a little bit so you can see, this is a broom. And so we're gonna be doing a fall themed broom. And so let me show you what you're gonna need for this. First off, you're going to need a cinnamon broom. I did not get this from Joanne Fabric or Craft Store. Surprisingly, I got this at the local Wegmans for $5. Now, here's what I did get from Joanne. We had a nice Labor Day sale, so pretty much all of these were 50% off. So I got, I don't know if it's supposed to be like, like a pussy willow branches, but they've got colored beads. And of course, none of these colors would you necessarily find in nature. <laughs> then I've got some orange roses. I got two, two of those. There's another one. And then I have, I don't know if these are supposed to be mums, maybe. And then I got a orange hydrangea, a sunflower, one of those wheat things, and some orange leaves. So you're also gonna need some paddle wire and I got some wire cutters. And I went to Michael's and I bought some burlap ribbon. Um, it does have a wire. And oh, you might also might need a stapler. So, uh, now that I have them, <laughs> let me try to see if I can recreate this look. So, the first one I put down was the orange, the orange thing. Okay. And so, you may have to bend and twist the leaves to get them where you like them. I want them to be, I mean, no two flowers that you get are the same so it's going to be hard to match them exactly and so then on either side I put the roses and just remember that this is going to be hanging now I've already done one that's a sample but you know since it's going to be hanging don't arrange it like right side up which is the way you typically do an arrangement just arrange it so test it so it's hanging down
about it. So, here we go. So now I have two, two brooms. So I'm gonna hang those on either side of the door, but I'm not gonna do it right now because it's kind of dark outside. But um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the pillow next. So just give me a minute. Hey guys, I'm back. So now we're gonna turn to doing a pillow, a slip covered pillow. So let me show you the pillow I did. So here it is, this is what it looks like. And on the back, as you can see, it's a little opening so that you can put a pillow insert. I got the pillow insert from Joann Fabric. Um, it was on sale, it was like two in a pack. I'm probably gonna go back and I'm probably gonna get, cause this is an 18 by 18 pillow insert. I probably wanna get the single ones cause this was a pair, but these are kind of thin. I wanted something, I wanted a pillow that had a lot more density to it so that it fills out this thing a little bit more. So let me just show you how to make a basic pillow slip cover okay so you're gonna need fabric I think with the fabric I got I got it was like one of the pre-cut two yard things so when you're cutting out the pillow you're gonna do a square because my pillow is square and you probably want to put give an additional at least two probably two to three inches extra. So if you have an 18 by 18 pillow, which is what I had, you wanna cut a square that's either 20 by 20 or 21 by 21. I did 21 by 21, it's a little loose. I probably could have gone with 20. Uh, the reason we wanna cut it bigger is as number one, this is just what it looks like if it was flat. This does not take into consideration the fact that the if you make it 18 by 18, it's not going to take into consideration the fact that the pillow is 3D. So you need to do that. You need to do that. So just make sure you cut it out appropriately. So obviously, if you if you get a thicker pillow insert, you're going to need to make you're probably going to need to make it three inches square. So I've already cut mine 21 by 21, 21 by 21 for the front piece. Now the back piece, because of course you needed to split to get the pillow insert in, you're gonna cut two pieces. Now mine, I did, I think I did one side 14 inches and one side, I believe I did 13 inches. And then what I did on the sides, and I'll show you on this one because I haven't done it yet, I'll show you how you do this. You fold it over an inch. So, it, and th so the 13 one, after you fold it an inch, ends up being 12 and the 14 one ends up being 13. Now, why did I fold it? I fold it, folded it because number one, it makes a neat edge. And the other thing is that um, cotton, which is what I'm using, is a woven fabric. So I'm sure you can see these things right here. Woven fabrics unravel over time. And so to, to encase the edge, that's why, so I folded it an inch and then basically I turned it under, so kind of like, I folded it in half and then like this, and then took half of this and like folded it under. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch it down like I did on this one, and that will encase the raw edge so that this doesn't unravel. So let me set up the camera. I'm gonna show you how I stitch it. Okay guys, so I'm at the sewing machine. So one thing I didn't mention is that when I folded it and then folded it under again, I actually pressed it down so that it would kind of hold its shape. So uh, this is my sewing machine. Um, I'm not gonna do a tutorial on the sewing machine because quite frankly, this is a gardening channel. <laughs> and, um, but this is the presser foot and I've got my fabric lined up. Now I don't, hopefully you guys can see it. Okay, so this is a close up of what I'm looking at. So as you can see, I'm using the presser foot as the edge to keep it straight. And so this is, I have a, a Singer Quantum Stylus, I can't remember which one, but it's got a touch screen, so I'm gonna choose a stitch. I'm going to choose a straight stitch with um, to the left, um, so it kind of shifted the needle over. Which, if you remember, it was. Hold on a second, let me do it again so you guys can see it. So, this is where tip, the standard straight stitch is, and this is where the left one is. Because I want it closer to this edge. And so, I'm going to use that edge 
they use the presser foot on that edge to keep it all straight. I'm sure you guys are probably wondering what this purple tape is. Yeah, I can't sew in a straight line. And I know that for some of you who follow my personal um, Instagram page, you'll be like, I've seen the clothes you, you sew for yourself. Yeah, this is how I do it. I have a purple tape to line it up. So let me put this back on the tripod. I'm just gonna put this needle down. I'm gonna do a couple back stitches just to secure it. Now we're gonna go back to the table. Okay, so we're back at the table. Uh, so when you sew things together, you want to put the right sides together. So as I've done, and make sure, just double check that because when I did the first poke, I kid you not, I did it. I was, I was, wasn't paying attention and I sewed the wrong thing together and I realized it after I, I, after I got it. So if you've done your job, you should be seeing the wrong sides on both sides, on the outside. So. Now I'm gonna put this one on, I'm going to line it up on the sides. And now I'm just going to... Now sometimes I don't always cut in a straight line, I'll be quite honest with you. And so sometimes it's not, you try to get it as level as possible. Um, there's going to be a 5 8 seam on here, so thankfully that will hide any uh, imperfections in your cutting, which and I can see right now, I did not cut these straight. In case you guys want to, if you guys want to do this, I'm sure you guys know this, my ends are pretty even, straight, like, because I clearly didn't get everything even, but what I use for cutting is a rotary cutter, and then you can use like, actually this is a French curve, but I need to get another one because I broke it, but you can use the side edge for cutting, or I have a yardstick and I can use that as you're cutting. And as you notice, I have a mat on my board. And so also one of the things I did was I lined the fabric up and used the straight edge on the, like the tick mark and that sort of thing. So just little tips, tips and tricks of the trade. So let's go back to the sewing machine. And there is my pooch. That's his, I, that's every room I'm in, he has to have a little spot to sit. So that's his spot in the sewing room. Now we have two pretty pillows to put on the porch on my lighter. So that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't that bad. It's in a chair. Now obviously they're not going in here, but that's how they're, you know, I have a bench, so it's gonna be on either side. 
Yes. Is that your bagging pose? Okay. All right. He's been good today. He hasn't actually had a lot many treats, but this is how it's gonna look. So now that I got that done, I'm gonna wait till the light of day and I'm going to <laughs> set up everything on the porch so you can see how pretty it looks. Right, Bumpy? Are you excited? Yeah? Okay, let's get you a treat. You want a treat? Oh, that is so cute. <laughs> okay, so I'm really happy with the way this looks. Like I said, I've never, um, I've never decorated a porch before, so I'm really excited. So the last thing you have to do, I you guys can see it. There are some pieces over here that are empty, so I'm still in the process of figuring out what I'm going to put in there. But I will do something so that way, because right now it's slightly, it's slightly un. Even. I mean, even though I have the symmetry with the brooms, you know, I got the bench over here and nothing over here, a plus the sign. So I'm going to do the pants over there, I think it'll kind of even it out. It'll be kind of e symmetrically asymmetric, kind of, if that's true. So anyway, let me give you guys a final look of the 